Good evening, Kim. Look thou? at you outside, Kim. Look at you. I am. And if this is um, uh, too noisy, I will immediately move. But... So you... It's beautiful. Oh, look at that. You see? There we are. Daisy, Daisy, little doggy poo. <laughs> She's so lazy, won't get up for you. Stop now. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We're going to blow your mind because this week we're going to talk about the sporting events that have affected us emotionally in our lives. So mine goes back to when I was uh, a very young boy and uh, my father, who I just revered, uh, was working night shifts a lot of time. So I didn't spend a lot of time with him. But when he asked me if I wanted to go to a hockey game, I was thrilled. Now, again, I was six or seven years old. So it was it wasn't like I knew a great deal about hockey, but I was already a hockey fan. And we just went down to the local rink. It's called Riverside Arena down in Windsor. My brother was there too. He was five. So uh, we went to the hockey game and the Windsor Bulldogs were playing. And the Windsor Bulldogs were a senior hockey team. And they had won the Allen Cup, which was the championship for senior hockey at the time. So there were a lot of names that many in the audience certainly would know. We didn't know. But, uh, but anyway, uh, a puck came off the ice. There were no there was no glass or anything along uh, around the rink at that time a puck came off the ice and came right near us and it magically disappeared and we couldn't figure it out and my brother and I are on our hands and knees trying to to find the puck and we couldn't find it anywhere and the referee kept shouting you know throw the puck back and nobody could find the puck we all looked and so they went and got another puck from the uh, the penalty box and the game continued on and my brother and I were thrilled to watch the rest of the game. We had to cross a busy street to get to our car after the game. Dad took our hands and walked us across the street. And as, as I was walking, he tucked a puck into my hand. And I looked up at him and, and I knew right away where that puck uh, had come from. That was the puck that had gone on, uh, out of the, the crowd or out of the ice surface and into the crowd. And Dad had tucked it into his sock and squirreled it away because he knew his, uh, his boys would, uh, would like that. So, so here I was, six or seven years old, and, and, uh, and had my first hockey puck given to me my, by my dad from a game where there were some real hockey players in it. And I still have the puck to this day in a little display in my, in my office. It's something special from my dad, and that reminds me of the early days of hockey. Do they, do they not do that then? And back then, Kevin, people didn't steal, the, well, not steal, I guess, but keep the puck when it went into the uh, crowd? Well, I think just because it was a, an exhibition game, a local exhibition game, the, the capacity was probably 200 people and it oh, may okay. be 150 people or whatever, probably some local, local kids, local hockey players who are 15 or 16 were probably the referees. I don't really know. But, you know, they at that point, they wanted you to throw the puck back. It wasn't uh, like it was any big souvenir, like it, it had come from a, a Detroit Red Wings or Toronto Maple Leafs game or something like mm. that. So just a special moment with my dad, but just reinforced my love of hockey and, and certainly my love for my father. I always, wa I always wondered what would happen or what, what the etiquette is when footballs go into the stands or basketball. Well, I know what happens when basketballs go in the stands. They throw the basketball back in. I don't know. I don't know why, you, you know, they've got enough basketballs there. Why don't you get to keep the basketball? I like, I like it though, in baseball, when they throw the uh, baseballs back at the uh, players. <laughs> Pretty funny, isn't it? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, um, I would love to hear from you, your take on your feelings when the Blue Jays won their first world series. Uh, before I get to that, I got to go back to 1961. I was nine years old, and that was the summer of Mantle and Maris. And that was the event that probably uh, lit the flame that uh, has turned into my, my baseball fandom. Just to never forget that, that summer, the home run chase. Uh, the two of them, both Yankees, obviously, uh, chasing each other throughout the entire summer. Couldn't wait to get the newspaper every day to look at the box scores to see if one or the other or both 
had hit a home run. Uh, you know, that's 60 years ago now, and I, I still remember it very, very clearly. Just but to yeah, that end, of, oh, sorry. I was just going to no, say, go I had just started collecting baseball cards at that time, and we could hardly wait opening those packs, chewing the gum, and hoping that we might get a mantle or a, or a mm. Maris. And I got a Maris in one of the first ones. I was the, the local hero till I lost it in a, you know, game <laughs> shooting. Legend leaders? Baseball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As, as the legend has it, the pressure on Maris was so great that his hair started falling out. Is that right? Yeah, true story. True story. No, no in, the, in the movie, Kim, the, the, you know, the 61 with the asterisk movie, I think, it, with uh, Billy Crystal. Um, the, the impression given is that Maris winning the, the, uh, the chase was kind of frowned upon a little bit because he was not the oh, guy who should die. Was that, was, that, was it actually like that when, when you were a kid? Yeah, very much so. It wasn't pure. Yeah, absolutely. That was a real thing back at the time. Mm. 100%. The he movie came over from Kansas City and then he was with the Yankees for a while, but then it seemed like he went to St. Louis shortly thereafter. He did, and, and his uh, his career ended quite uh, quite abruptly. Um, the, the, the next season was good. He hit thirty something home runs, but wasn't uh, wasn't the same uh, uh, level as as the big year. And he was out of baseball quite quickly. Yeah. Whereas Mantle was there, he was a lifetime, uh, a lifelong rather Yankee as well. Seems like he was ingrained in the psyche there. Well, Man Mantle's an icon, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest oh. players to ever play the game. And uh, Maris did not make the Hall of Fame and is most famous for that one year. And his hair loss, presumably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but moving on to the Jays, you know, you have to talk about, it started in 1983 for me, which was the first year that they were not awful. There was a point in August where they were actually uh you know kind of on the fringe of contention they didn't win of course um and then we all remember 1985 when they blew the, the or I, do we all remember 1985 when the, when they blew the three to one lead to uh, sure to when you when I, who was it that said um sure you know we're not going to lose all three <laughs> <laughs> and they did <laughs> And then 1987, when they lost seven in a row to end the season, oh my God, these things were so painful. So, but by, by, by the time we got to uh, to 92, beyond thrilling, I remember I was at my my friend uh, Rusty Prouse's apartment um, on Church in in, uh, in the gay ghetto. There was a whole bunch of us watching TV, and never forget that moment when. Uh, and when Carter hit the home run and the, and the, the city went quite literally berserk. And I often uh, think about what it will be like uh, when, and hopefully it's in our lifetime, the police uh, actually do win the Stanley Cup, because that will be about the only thing, with full respect to the, uh, the Raptors' incredible uh, parade in 2019, that will, that will top that. I, the, thing, the thing that I remember most... Well, I mean, I remember a lot about those two years that the uh, the Jays won back to back. But the thing that I remember about the first one was how the sentiment was we beat the Americans at their game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How did you celebrate to you guys? Anything special? Uh, I, I, I'm trying to think back about the, about the Jays. I have a vague recollection of celebrating something when they won the first one but um and i have a vague recollection of that early seasons because the time uh my girlfriend her parents had seasons tickets and uh we went a few times but that's about it um the one the one for me of these things is canada winning the first time they won in 72 against the russians we were watching yeah. it at, uh i can go right back there right now we're watching charlie fitzpatrick's basement Charlie's were up the street. He was I don't know, on a dead end street. There were <clears throat> eight or ten of us within a couple of years of each other age wise. So I always had enough for baseball, you know, pick up football, street hockey, of course, because we had a dead end street. Um, but yeah, I remember watching the game and we're all there. It had to be seven or eight of us there and just frantic watching the game because the Russians had already won a couple and this was our chance. And we came back and we won it. I remember screaming at the top of our lungs and running out of Charlie's house onto the street. We're all screaming like lunatics. I, I, I was I, driving I the. Uh, why? 
Sorry? I was driving the Sam's franchisee's car back from uh, Toronto with a load full of records, listening to it on the uh, on the car radio. That wow. Sticks in my mind. Very I was in uh, high school and they rolled the big TV into the cafeteria and, and uh, we all sat around in the cafeteria and watched it in black and white off the, uh, yeah. the TV, which wouldn't even as be as big as the TV I have in my room right now. But, uh, but it was sure on, those tall, on those tall wheels. Like, Mm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, one last thing. On, what, one last thing on the Jays, if I might, just before we leave them, I I don't know. With full respect to the the World Series years, which were incredible, I don't know that uh, it'll, it it won't be easy to top November the fourteenth, two thousand and fifteen, uh, October the fourteenth, two thousand and fifteen, which was the uh, uh, Jose Bautista home run. Oh my God, that that was a true earthquake. Um, I'm sure you guys all remember that. I don't know where you were and how it impacted you, but is that the bat flip? Something. Yeah, was yeah. that the bat flip? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Hey, would you have been aware at all of the Summit Series in 1972? Me? Yeah. <laughs> God, God, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, didn't even uh, 72. I guess. There must have been a uh, there must have been a, uh, a, um, a Winter Olympics in seventy two um, that I would have watched and maybe I watched the ice hockey because that's when I first sort of had any any real introduction to to ice hockey as it was in call of course in the UK because field hockey is really the the biggest sport in the UK um, but yeah I I would have probably watched the Olympics and but that was it but no I mean you know the the notion of Canada Russia being a big um, rivalry in hockey no and no, no concept of it at all I mean the, the same frankly with it with the blue yeah exactly okay straight over the top of my head yeah uh, you know the same with the same with the, the the blue Jays of 92 93 I mean you know no no concept of it at all um, I mean 92 93 were you know if you if you say back to back years that that was Nigel Mansell who was a big hero um, racing driver he was Formula One world champion in 92 and immediately quit and went to Indy cars and then won the IndyCar championship in 93 and subsequently came back to F1 after that but but that's the sort of back-to-back -back that I know from the early 90s but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say <laughs> all of these things kind of go wow those are interesting things that I had no idea about whatsoever. It's, it's funny you say that about Nigel Mansell because I was and we can save this for another day if we get to another day um but the thing that I was, the thing I was thinking about actually the other day was with regards to Lewis Hamilton and people calling him the greatest race car driver in the world. But it's like, well, maybe with Formula One right now. But how do you measure that against, you know, I mean, it's it's apples and oranges. Let's see him in a NASCAR race. Yeah. Let's see, you know, let's see him in an <laughs> Indy 500 race. And maybe he, you know, Maybe he would do well, but I think this is one of those things where, you know, going back to what I said a couple of weeks ago about, you know, my wife saying, you know, well, Tiger Woods is the best golfer in the world for people that play golf on TV. So it's, yeah. it's, one, of, it's one of those things. It's apples and oranges all over the place. But yeah, well, we, 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 could have a, we could have a good discussion about that another time, Steve. It's, but uh, yeah, yeah I'll, 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 I'll line up my arguments for that one another day. That's good. Well, in the meantime, why don't you line up your story? All right. Well, well, the the first one that I remember was was soccer. It was the 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 summer, I guess, the summer of nineteen seventy, um, <clears throat> and it must have been was it nineteen seventy? I think it was nineteen seventy. It was it was not the World Cup when England went to uh, Mexico and lost to Germany in the quarterfinal, which was absolutely heart-wrenching. But it was the FA Cup final. And I, I must have been eight years old, I think, in the summer of 1970. I was eight years old. And Chelsea were playing Leeds in the, in the FA Cup final. Chelsea, massive, um, you know, London team, of course, Leeds up from up north in Yorkshire. Um, and the Leeds, Leeds team in those years, those sort of early 70 years, every single player on the team played for their country. They were all national players. So that's like every player on, on, the, on the Leafs playing for their national team in the Olympics, right? Every single, every single player in every single position 
played for the com their, their country. Almost all of them played for England. A few played for Scotland. Goalkeeper played for Wales, and a couple played for Republic of Ireland, I think. Um, but they were they were some team. They were some team. Anyway, Chelsea were the kind of um, the glamour team from London. And I was just a kid of eight years old. I was a West Ham supporter at the time, um, kind of. I was sort of just learning to be a, a, a sports fan. Um, and actually, harking back to something we talked about a couple of weeks ago, about how do you pick a team when your team isn't, isn't in, the, in the tournament any longer? Well, my team, such as they were West Ham, was, were not in the final. This was Leeds and, and Chelsea. But obviously, it's one of those things that I, you know, Kevin, you said the same kind of thing. You, you find you find yourself gravitating towards one of the competitors for some reason, some emotional thing kind of wells up inside you and you, you will one of the teams to win. Well, for some reason I, I willed Leeds to win. Um, and then the, uh, the, the first, the first final went, was a tie at the end of the full time. And then they had extra time and it was a tie at the end of extra time as well. In back in those glory days, they didn't have penalty shootouts and all that rubbish. So they had a replay. So they then played it, I think, later in the week, like on a Thursday or something like that at Old Trafford. They played the real final at, at, or the original final at Wembley. And then the, uh, the replay was at Old Trafford, the Man United um, field. And, I was, and it was an evening game because it was midweek. Um, and I was eight years old and I was in bed, right? Because, you know, they probably started at like 7.30. And my bedtime was probably 7.15, something like that. <laughs> anyway, I was, I was kind of, I was in bed, sort of listening to it on the radio, I think. And, and my dad would come up every now and then and tell me what the score was. And I remember getting desperately upset that Chelsea were going to win. And, they, and Chelsea eventually won it 2-1. And I, I just remember lying in bed, you know, crying and thinking, this is awful. How did Leeds, how did Leeds not win? And then I wasn't even a Leeds fan. But that's, you know, it's just one of those things that the, it was the very first time, I think, that the sort of drama and, and emotion of sport kind of captured me as a little kid, you know. And although I don't, I don't watch football in the same way that I, I did when I was younger, it's, it's that, that emotion, that kind of drama about, about sport, I think, has you know, grabbed me that day and, and has never really left me, or, even though I watch a whole bunch of different sports and, you know, I... I don't cry quite as often when my team loses anymore. <laughs> you know, I still do a bit, but not quite as bad. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was the very first one for me, the very first for sure. Okay. Ian, I'm curious, when did you start to become aware of sports and become maybe a follower of sports? Do you remember? Um, <clears throat> uh, as a follower of sports, um, you know, back when I when I was a kid. Uh, and when Kim did, uh, you know, we had a black and white TV. We picked up CBC. I want to say whatever the, what became the CTV channel, and um, the uh, Radio Canada. And I want to say that was it on a on a good night with the air. You know, we had those rabbit ears. You might be able to pick up um, one of the stations at our uh, Plattsburgh North Pole Burlington. Couldn't tell you what the call letters were, but those stuck with me. Um, but, you know, growing up at that time in the early 60s, you know, the, the Canadians were already a very strong and very dominant team, and you couldn't escape it as a kid. I got my first Canadians jersey, I want to say, when I was five or six. I remember, I remember finding it many years later, um, in, you know, stowed away in the box or something in the bottom of my closet, um, and going, oh my God, and I, how, it was like this big, it was just, it was tiny. Um, so I mean that that's my first my first real memory is the Canadians and um, yeah I'd say I probably so you know 63, 64, I want to say was when when I first got it and and at that time that was really it for me and then it was later I discovered the Alouettes and then obviously the Expos um, but yeah I mean that was it I mean yeah that was that that'd be my biggest thing there and, and of course Montreal it was like everybody played hockey right. you know we played ball hockey. All year long, it seemed we had the annual summer, you know, July first Canada Day game under, you know, under the lights of well, uh, under the sun in front of Henderson's house on Canada. Day. So, sorry. What What about you, Kim? When did you start following sports? Turn your mic on, Kim. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I, I think that Yankee story was was part of it. But other than that, I, I remember being transfixed by Frank Mahavlich, the Big M. 
Um, and, you know, uh, I like everybody, I was a big uh, uh, Leafs fan and, you know, it was very commonplace in the uh, in the first half of the 60s for them to uh, to be very good and uh, and winning the Stanley Cup. And, you know, lots of people of my age uh, will uh, have a similar story whereby when they won in 67, it was like, hey, that, that's cool. Good work, boys. But in the back of your head, you're thinking, yeah, we'll see them again soon, soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Well, on the, the, on the grand scheme of the planet, it will be soon enough. It was early 60s for, uh, uh, for the Leafs and for, uh, for baseball via Mantle and Maris. Okay. Oh, I also say uh, the early mid-60s Dodgers, the, the West Coast equivalent was, uh, was the Dodgers, Sandy Koufax in particular, but, but all of the Dodgers starting pitchers. Man, that was incredible. Was that Don, Don Marshall on that team? Uh, Don, hmm? Don Drysdale. Don Drysdale. Don Drysdale. Okay. Uh -huh. so, 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 Kim, how did you how did you first discover baseball? Like, as you know, for me, I was I mean, I played as a kid, but you know, I only kind of became a fan of baseball when the Expo showed up in Montreal. But you were here; the Jays weren't around then. What what was it that what story kind of thing happened? How did were you reading the sports pages every day or what? No, it was Mantle and Maris. It, that was such a huge thing that it became mm. front, front page uh, news beyond the sports page. Wow. And, and it caught me and, uh, and transported me. In 1962, um, uh, my mother, uh, God bless her, took me to Holland on ocean liner. She was Dutch. And I remember when we were in New York uh, City very briefly for a few hours. We went to a department store and uh, she bought me a, a book about the Dodgers at the time. So that, that, that played a role in it too. Cool. I'd love to go to Holland, wouldn't you? Oh. Anyway, sorry. Can you, can you edit that out please, Wax? <laughs> we just lost half our viewership. <laughs> oh my God, that might be the first joke you ever told me, Kevin, the first time I met you like 600 years ago. <laughs> and I've told it 600 times since. So. <laughs> oh, he didn't tell you about futon cold water? Or what is it? Was it? <laughs> oh. What about you, Kev? Well, so again, I just idolized my dad and didn't have all that much time with him. So he watched Hockey Night in Canada every Saturday night. So from my earliest memories, I sat on the couch beside him and we watched and it was always the Leafs playing. So because the Maple Leafs were dad's team, they were my team too. So, so I was watching hockey from, I, I'm guessing from the, uh, that I can remember anyway, from the sixties on, but I remember in 60, uh, 62 and uh, they won the Stanley cup that year. And, you know, we'd been transfixed watching it on TV, but we didn't get very much coverage in the Windsor star newspaper, our local newspaper. So dad took us down to the bus station and allowed me to buy the, the, Telegram, the Globe and Mail, and the Toronto Star, so I could get more pictures and more information about the the Leafs at that time. And we made that uh, that trip several times over the next little while. So it was these things, but just that's hockey on the on the baseball side. It was baseball cards, of course. But D the Detroit Tigers played across the river, and the river is only a mile across from where we lived, so it wasn't very far. And, and uh, I had an uncle who who. Uh, would often take us to to Tigers games. He had a, a mentally challenged daughter who loved baseball and he would get four tickets and he would take my brother and I and my cousin Patsy and, and my uncle, we would go and watch the Detroit Tigers play. And even though we were sitting way up in the bleachers, Dale and I had our baseball gloves at the ready just in case a ball came our way. And, you know, uh, the, the, the Detroit Tigers became our team at the time and it was Al Kaline and Rocky Colavito and later on Bill Freehand, these guys who were my heroes until the uh, the Jays came along, even though I still have a, a bit of a soft spot for the Tigers now. So so it's just big sports guy, played it on the street every every moment we could, didn't matter what time of year it was, didn't matter what sport it was. And and our TV, like yours, Ian, too, we only had a few channels, but uh, we got enough to whet our appetites and make us big fans as well. 
For, for me, it's, it's funny. I always think of 1970 as the year that I got into sports. And actually, 1970 is yeah. the year that I started to follow sports. But I, I distinctly remember the black and white TV beside, beside the um, dining room table watching Jean-Claude Keeley at the 1968 Winter Olympics. That's that. That's like right there, and the other and the other one from those you know 60, 68, 69 were all of the um, Muhammad. I I, I have an, a Muhammad Ali obsession. I have a space obsession. I have a Muhammad Ali set obsession. I have a basketball obsession. But um, Muhammad Ali's um, all his comeback fights towards the Frazier fight, and then the and then that first Frazier fight. But not being able, obviously, to see these things, I saw the buildup on Wide World of Sports, but having to listen to the radio to get round by round reports at the end of each round and how mm-hmm. the fights were going yeah. and, and staying up late to listen to those to those reports. And then being when he when he won, it was fantastic. And then when he lost to Frazier, it was so devastating, absolutely so devastating. But 1970. I don't know specifically why, but the very first, the very first time I picked a team was picking the Minnesota Vikings, going into the Super Bowl against um, the Kansas City Chiefs, and specifically picking them because their um, nickname was the Purple People Eaters. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it's funny. I, I, I until I. I was always, you know, I was a homer, like, you know, because I grew up in Toronto, I liked the Toronto Maple Leafs, I liked the Toronto Argonauts, but I never, I never lived and died with any of the, with either of the teams. I, they were my favorite teams, but they didn't, I wasn't really emotionally attached. I I do want to share a Toronto Argonauts story, because I was thinking about this the other day. Um, Zen and Andrew Sisham was the was the field goal kicker for the Toronto Argonauts back in the mid 70s early 70s and into the mid 70s and um I remember in the Toronto Star there was a quote from him claiming to be even though he was the kicker claiming to be the best player in the CFL back then we used to go we used to be able to go to the practices all the time I went to a practice and at the end of the practice (laughs) I went down to the field to get autographs from, from different players. And I went up to Zen and Andrew Session. And okay, I was 13 or 14 at the time. I went up to Zen and Andrew Session and I said to him, I saw what you said in the newspaper. And one day I'm going to be the best player in the CFL. And he looked at me and he said, not if you keep eating ice creams like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I was eating an ice cream bar at the time <laughs> and I was a fat kid. So he actually, you know, he scarred me. All right. So let, let's, ra- let's wrap it up um, because whoever has listened to this episode is probably exhausted and needs to have a bite to eat. So thank, <laughs> thank you for, thank you so much for joining us. You are a new athletic supporter. If you would just please let us know who you are and we could send you one of our t-shirts. Um, it, won't be, it won't be a newly clean t-shirt. It'll be one of the t-shirts we're wearing tonight. <laughs> it won't say new athletic supporters on it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you know, don't even bother putting a sticker in the book. Just look at it. <laughs> I'm sure that, you know, if you could rate, if you could review, you probably would, but you probably can't, so you haven't. I understand. You probably haven't subscribed either. I appreciate the effort, though, that you've made to listen this far. So thank you so much. And and anybody else that has listened to this point, you two are new athletic supporters. That would make, let's see, the five of us, the one person that has been listening regularly. So that would make it seven. <laughs>